Little Moth, you're being so stubborn at the moment. Fine. I won't force you. Yet. You mad, bro? Warning, this is a demo for Don't Look, an erotic horror visual novel. This game includes gore, strong language, sexual themes, insect themes, manipulation, flashing lights, loud noises, and is intended for 18 plus audiences only. Okay. Oh, no, moths. Oh, moths. Oh. Oh, boy. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'm going to be playing a horror visual novel called Don't Look. Um, from what I've read, I think you are blindfolded. I've been very interested in this ever since I heard about it. This is a game meant for adult audiences, so some creepy, spooky, possibly adult stuff might happen, I don't know. But I will censor as needed, because, you know, our good friend. Uh, let's, let's see what we are not meant to look at in this don't look. This is a gorgeous title screen, by the way. Gorgeous. Moth, what is your name? Espoir. Espoir. Such a wonderful name. The day I first saw you, I promised myself I'd never let this world hurt you. Oh, well, na nah, nah, isn't that sweet? I know you don't understand now, but you will. It's okay. You don't have to worry, little moth. I'm going to take good care of you. Okay. As long as you give me sushi and video games, I am good. Let me make the right choices for you. Let me love you with all that I am. Oh, that's so sweet. That's sweet. And trust that I will take care of you. Hmm. Your head was pounding as you regained consciousness. Your whole body felt weak. You slowly tried to open your eyes, only to find you still couldn't see anything. Cool. There was something covering your eyes that was wrapped tight around your head. What's happening? Where am I? I can't see anything. You tried to sit up, but as you got part way up, your wrists were tugged backwards. It appears you were attached to something. Scream. Stay quiet. Struggle. S stay quiet and survey your surroundings. You weren't sure if it was from fear of someone hearing you, or the fear that someone won't. You decided to just stay quiet and calm as possible. As you sit there, waiting for any kind of change, you take note of what you can sense in this room. It was dusty, with a slight damp smell. You could hear the slight whir of some kind of ventilation system, and the air was quite cold against your skin, but not freezing. Your hands did their best to flatten out against whatever you were sat on. It didn't feel like a cold concrete floor. Quite the opposite. It felt like a soft, comfortable bedspread. You could only assume you were on some kind of makeshift bed in a creepy person's basement. Another sound caught your attention. It was the sound of footsteps coming closer. A lump formed in your throat from the sound, your body tensing as you prepared for what you could only assume was your captor to enter the room. You soon heard the loud opening of a door to the far left of the room. Oh, you're awake. How are you feeling, little moth? Oh, no. Well, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. <coughs> you hear them walking close to you before you feel their presence sitting across from you. Oh, hello, sir and or madam. Most likely, sir. The sound of a tray being put down catches your attention, as well as the smell of hot food. I'm glad you're awake. I've been looking forward to talking to you properly. You've been asleep for nearly a whole day. Well, maybe if you hadn't chloroformed me. <laughs> ah, where are my manners? I'm Zachary. Nice to meet you at last, my little ma. Nice to meet you too, Zachary. Now can you please untie me? This guy didn't sound particularly terrifying. He actually seemed quite polite, but I still need to be careful. No, oh, hey, I'm Espoir. It means hope in French. Are you French? No. Then why do you have a French name? It's a long story. My name is Espoir. I think he already knew that. I'm getting the feeling that he already knew that. Well, I already know that, but it's still cute to be polite. <laughs> You probably have a lot of questions. And I'm an open book, so ask away. <clears throat> what 
What you got on that plate, fam? What you, what you got? What's that? Can I have some? Is that for me? Can I eat it? I'm kind of hungry. Actually, I should probably eat something before I re start recording. Where am I? Why did you bring me here? Are you gonna kill me? Why did you bring me here? You were terrified of the reason he may have kidnapped you and brought you here. You assumed it could only be for a bad reason. Well, I've been watching you for a couple of weeks now, and I'm finally ready to commit to you. My little moth. Oh, little, little moth. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, adorable kidnapper. It didn't sound like he was lying, but that was even more terrifying. Why did he leave me blindfolded if he had kidnapped me? He was currently talking to me like I wasn't going to be let go anytime soon, so why the secrecy? Are you hungry? I made you mac and cheese. I'll have to feed you, so come closer and open up. Give me that mac and cheese, sir! Macaroni with the chicken strips! Oh! You scoot yourself closer and open up your mouth for him to feed you. Better be delicious. Ah, uh, see? How does it taste? I've always been told to make a good mac and cheese. Is it delicious, me? Is it delicious? You couldn't deny this was insanely good mac and cheese. You felt a little embarrassed on how quickly you opened your mouth for more. Yeah. Pretty soon you heard the tray being moved away from you and Zachary stood up. This is such a qu Well, that's our time for today, little moth. Mm -hmm. I gotta head out, so you two just have fun, okay? I love you. Two? What? Somebody else here eating my macaroni and cheese? <coughs> Zachary. You're two-timing me already? We just met? That's really neat. This is a really neat concept. Two? And just like that, the footsteps left the room and the door closed behind him. Part of you was relieved that he left, but something he said sounded off. Two? What does he mean, two of us? Um, are you okay? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Who are you? A voice caught you off guard. You almost jumped out of your skin, not expecting another person to start speaking. I... who's there? I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Zack told me to be quiet until you'd... settled in. Mm-hmm. His voice sounded like another captor by the tone, also his obedience to listen to Zachary. He must have been here since you first arrived. Does that mean he just sat there during everything that just happened? Are you okay? Are you good, fam? Are you okay? You sound pretty scared, too. Uh, me? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. My name is Chester, by the way. Oh, hi, Chester. Being one of many captives was definitely a little unnerving. How many more people had this guy kidnapped? What does he want with us? So, um, I believe he wants... To be in a relationship with us? Oh. All of us? Okay. I suppose. He's had a couple of partners before I got here. I think we're just his latest crushes. At least from what he's told me. Oh no! As Baduvid collects fictional husbands, but Zachary collects actual husbands and wives. Oh no! Zachary, you need to play some visual novels. The word crushes almost made you vomit, like this was some innocent feelings towards someone. But nothing was innocent about a kidnapping. Needless to say, don't kidnap people. Don't do that. That's not cash money. You could only imagine what happened to the partners he had before you and Chester. So, what happened to the others? Some of them were, um gotten rid of if you disobey him then he tends to get violent but if you're polite he's just as polite back all right good to know good to know i think that's why he keeps me alive because i just do what he says oh poor chester thanks for the reassurance yeah thanks thanks for the reassurance mm, thanks for the reassurance chester you're welcome I'm sorry there's not much more that I can That's do. That's fine. You're doing fine, sweetie. You're doing amazing, sweetie. His voice made it sound hopeless. Chester just sounded like he was already used to this kind of situation. 
you weren't sure if you felt more sorry for him or yourself. Start crying. Hmm. What's with the little moth thing? He keeps calling me little moth. What does that mean? Oh, he gives us all bug nicknames. He calls me Bumblebee. Oh, Bumblebee. Nothing he said sounded reassuring. You were starting to think maybe this was entirely hopeless. Are you blindfolded too? Not anymore. Zack let me take off my blindfold a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Why does he keep us blindfolded? I, I'm not entirely sure. He seems to think it's some kind of... trust thing? Uh, I don't really know. So, if you're good, he might take your blindfold off. That's something to keep in mind. Alright. You felt slightly powerless without some kind of sight. It felt like your perspective of the world was askew from the lack of certainty. Questions filled your mind about the space around you, the people who you just met, and the things you had yet to know about. You were about to ask another question when Chester interrupted your train of thought. We should probably get some sleep. Zack won't be back for a while, and there's not much else we can do. Oh, okay. With nothing else to do, you listened to Chester's advice, shuffling down to lay as best as you could with your shackles bound behind your back. You slowly go to sleep, and even though it was uncomfortable, at some point you managed to fall unconscious. Day two. You woke up at some point later, with a blindfold on. It was almost impossible to tell the time, however you surprisingly felt well rested. Your body rolled to sit yourself up. You'd think at this point the blindfold would have at least loosened up. However, it was just as tight around your head, and your vision still impaired. There's probably... There's probably a way you could get that off, if it's just tight around your head. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The sound of that heavy door opening caught you off guard for a moment, making you jump slightly. Hey there, love bugs. Oh, you're both up. I got you some water. Oh yeah, water. We need that. We need that. You heard Zachary walk closer to you, feeling him tilt your chin up a little and press the open bottle of water to your lips. Don't drink it. Spit it at him. Nah, we'll drink it. We'll be nice. We'll be nice for now. For now. You eagerly allowed him to pour water into your mouth. You drank it down with little hesitation or care for how pathetic you must have looked right now. <laughs> Good little mouth. You need to keep your strength up. That's it. You can finish the bottle. Hey. Stop with this reassuring manipulation. You were unsure if you were regretting your decision or wholeheartedly standing by it. The outcome was certainly shaping the future of your unwilling stay here. You both okay? Do you need anything else? You got any cheesecake? I could really go for some cheesecake. And some cartoons. And maybe some white cheddar popcorn. Now I'm just making myself hungry. Darn it. Could I have another blanket? It's getting too cold down here. Of course, my bumblebee. Anything for you. How about you, little moth? Do you want anything? Uh. Um. Yeah, I guess a blanket. Yeah, a blanket. Could I also have a blanket? You can. You both deserve to stay warm and snuggled. No. Oh. But he's a kidnapper. But he's being really sweet. Ugh. Espoir. He moved to give Chester water before standing back up and heading off to grab blankets for you and Chester. He thankfully didn't take too long and retrieved the blankets quite quickly, wrapping one around Chester before coming over to you. How do you know he did that? How do you know that he wrapped one around Chester? Oh well. There we go. That's better, right? Yes. The blanket around you was so warm, and it felt like it was fresh out of the dryer. It was slightly warm against your skin. Oh, that sounds lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything for you. Stop! You're a kidnapper and probably a murderer! Stop. 
After Zachary left, it was just you and Chester left alone in the bunker. Hmm. I guess we could talk to Chester. Hey Chester, what's up? What's up? What's up, dude? You decided that talking to Chester would be your best option for now. Maybe some insight from someone else would be comforting. Yeah, we can't see anything. We can't really move, but he can at least see. So, how did you end up here? Did he kidnap you too? I don't really remember much. Uh, but I remember that Zack was a good guy that I'd seen at my work. Mm -mm. He used to come in a lot, and, and he was kind of flirtatious, but, but he was nice. Uh, I was working late, so I had to lock myself up one night, and, uh, and I just remember being hit over the head, and, and then I woke up here. Oh, well. <laughs> Comfort him, scold him, scoot closer to him. Oh, it's all right, baby. I comfort you. I'm really sorry that happened to you. It's okay. I'm also sorry that you're in this situation, too. Talking to Chester was certainly enlightening. You were kind of glad you had another person to talk to while you were here. Being alone, you felt like you would go crazy. Oh, I can... Let's see. Explore the area. How can I do that? You scoot along your bed, trying to get as far as you can until the chain becomes taut. You are now sat on the end of your makeshift bed, unable to move any further before due to the shackles. You reach around the area in front of you with your legs, seeing if you could reach something with your foot. That's a good idea. Your foot hits against a hard surface. It felt like some kind of cupboard with a handle. Hmm. Open the cupboard? Yeah, open the cupboard. You use your foot to angle upwards and pull open the cupboard. You hear the sound of a glass bottle hitting the floor and rolling towards you. You are surprised it didn't smash, but you used your feet to pull the bottle close to you and into your lap. Good, good, smart thinking. You couldn't quite tell what it was, but you could tell it was kind of full. What is this? Chester, can you tell me what I found? Th that's cyanide. He has a lot of bottles in those cupboards. Ooh, cyanide. But it smells like almonds. Cyanide? Why is he keeping this? Apparently it can be used in making paper. He writes and, and makes his own books. My dude. Why are you keeping around cyanide when you can just go down to the local staples and just get a pack of paper or something? Is that really necessary? You can afford cyanide, but you can't afford a three dollar stack of paper. Come on now. <laughs> What a weird thing to keep down here. A bottle of literal poison. But then again, you couldn't complain now that you have something of use. You do your best to roll the bottle up the bed and tuck it back behind your mattress on the floor. It could come in handy. Feel around your bed. You shuffle back to feel around the area that you're sleeping on. It's a firm mattress with a few blankets. You have a couple of somewhat comfortable pillows to sleep on. It feels like he at least attempted making this area comfortable. You felt around the wall behind you and felt something sharp touch your hand. Ooh. Well, thankfully it didn't break the skin, but it felt like it could. Feel it more. You do your best to feel the sharp object without cutting yourself and notice it's a sharp piece of metal. It seems to be stuck in the wall. Ooh, that sounds dangerous. Cutting off her blindfold. Leave it alone. Cut your hands free. Mmm. Now it says that we're shackled. So I'm assuming it's a chain, so that's not going to work. But we could cut the blind. I'm going to leave it alone for now. Because these two seem kind of dangerous. I'm going to leave that alone. You decide it's not worth investigating any further. But next time, I'm coming back for that sharp object. That's enough investigating for one day. You assume there might not be anything else of interest to you, and you decide to rest in your makeshift bed for more sleep. Night two. Hmm. As you are attempting to get some sleep, you feel something on your back. Something light is touching you. You barely register it in your sleepy state, but as the patterns keep repeating, you definitely know something is touching you. Panic? Move away? Do nothing. As you lay there and take note of the feeling, you slowly start to realize its fingers tracing along your skin. Hmm? It must be Chester. You wait for a little while to try and figure out what he's writing. Six, seven, two, hold on a second, two, zero, 
three. He soon stops and you hear him shuffle back to his own bed. Six, seven, two, zero, three. What does that mean? How was he able to write that on your back? Without much more context, you try to remember those numbers as you fall asleep. I have them in my phone. Day three. Ah, Day three is still in development. Thank you so much for playing this far. I hope the game was enticing. We're really proud of our efforts so far, as you should be. This is fun. I like this. If you'd like to continue to support our game's development, please check out our Discord, Patreon, and itch.io for details. Links can be found on our Twitter page. At Don't Look VN. Please check out all our links and our credits to show support for our team, too. A lot of them are working on their own games. Thank you from all of us at the Don't Look Visual Novel team for testing our game. See you soon, little moths. <laughs> well, obviously, I have to go back and see if I can do things a little differently. A little bit more realistically. Alright, uh, so let's be as loud and rude as possible. Scream! <laughs> Help! Someone help me, please. Someone please help me. I'm sorry, I can't be very loud. My throat hurts. As you sit there, waiting for any kind of change, you take note of what you can sense in this room. Hey, there's no need to yell. I'm right here, little moth. You hear them walking close to you before you feel their presence sitting across from you. Let's see. Tell names, stay quiet, swear at him. You butt! You big butt, go fluff yourself. And other explicitive words. You're awfully rude, you know that? Mm. Well, you kind of kidnapped me and shackled me and blindfolded me, my good sir. I think we're kind of one for one on the rude scale. You probably have a lot of questions. And I'm an open book, so ask away. Where am I? From your own research, you couldn't tell much about the area you're in, but maybe he'd be courteous enough to grant you some kind of insight. You're in my bunker. Sorry it's not the best, but you'll be allowed upstairs soon enough. Allowed? It didn't sound like he was lying, but that was even more terrifying. Are you gonna kill me? The words slipped out of your mouth before you even had a chance to really stop them. Not unless I have to. You're too sweet to kill without a reason. Oh, oh I'll give you a reason, all right. <laughs> Let's see. Comply, refuse, or kick. Kick him! Kick him in the shins! <laughs> you kick your leg out at him, managing to kick the bowl out of his hand and sending it clattering to the floor. Oh, how, how naughty, how rude. Zachary was still for a moment before you heard him stand up and come close to you. Oh! You feel a hard punch come down across your face, making your cheek throb and the slight taste of blood fill your mouth. All right. All right, fine. Don't try that again, okay? Okay, yeah. You, you, make, you make a good point. I don't like the smile. I was good okay. up to the smile. If you're gonna hurt me, hurt me. Don't have me thinking about this ten years later in the therapist's office. I'm not into that sort of thing, sir. How dare you? I am a woman of class. I. I like, I like clowns and golf balls and hairball men. <laughs> I don't like that sort of thing. You nodded quickly, coming to realize that Zachary is clearly not above violence. Well, yeah, I figured. I don't care. Mm. I don't care who you are, if you're loyal to that creepy a-hole. Uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Y you're right, I I'm, I'm Chester, by the way. Just in case... Never mind. <laughs> Aw. Being one of many captors was definitely a little unnerving. How many more people had this guy kidnapped? I think that's why he keeps me alive. Because I just do what he says. Well, fluff that. Huh. Forget that. That's pathetic. He you should really watch yourself. I don't want to see more people die of their own hubris. <laughs> Dying of my own hubris is my middle name. <laughs> His voice made it sound hopeless. Chester just sounded like he was already used to this kind of situation. Have you even tried to escape? I'm assuming you're too afraid to try and escape then. Well, why would I? He'll just catch me if I try and run, 
or hurt me if I try and escape. Aww. Nothing he said sounded reassuring. You were starting to think that maybe this was entirely hopeless. You heard Zachary walk close to you, feeling him tilt your chin up a little, and press the open bottle of water to your lips. Uh, let's see, don't drink it, spit it at him. Yeah, let, let's be rude, just be, let's be a little demon to him. Patui! What is this, the Sani? Ugh! Get this out of my face. You took a swig of water into your mouth, however, you didn't swallow it. Instead, you held it in your mouth for a moment as he pulled the bottle away. You then spat the water out at him. You couldn't see his reaction, but you could hear the yelp of surprise. Hey! You little shit! <laughs> you mad? You mad, bro? <laughs> I'm gonna be bruised and beaten and missing teeth, but I'll just be loud like, <laughs> You mad, bro? <laughs> you mad? You felt his hand launch forward to grab around your neck tightly, making you lightheaded and gasping. You're on thin fucking ice. Being cute won't help you for long. <laughs> his voice was seething before he let go suddenly, dropping you back down to your bed. You took in long breaths and coughed slightly. <coughs> you mad, bro? <coughs> you mad? <coughs> Zach's mad. Zach's mad. <laughs> Ho's mad. Ho's mad. Your throat already feeling tender from the lack of water, but his iron grip on top made it so much worse. <laughs> Kinda looks like being an a-hole is not a very good thing to do. <laughs> you were unsure if you were regretting your decision or wholeheartedly standing by it. The outcome was certainly shaping the future of your unwilling stay here. How about you, little mouth? Do you want anything? I can't think of a snarky remons or uh, I can't think of a snar snarky response that would end in D's nuts. I'm not good at making up jokes, but D's nuts. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. I want you to let me go. <laughs> That's cute. What do you think the answer will be? Sure. Off on your way then? On your bike? <laughs> he moved he moved to give Chester water before standing up and heading off to grab the blankets for Chester. He thankfully didn't take too long and retrieves the blanket quite quickly, wrapping it around Chester before coming over to you. You should really just stop with this stubborn attitude. I love you, little moth. But you are becoming a pain. Oh, you don't even know the half of it. See, the thing about me is I'm usually a nice person. But if you mess with me, then all this stuff I've got cooking up inside me, all this stuff I've bottled up, ooh. <laughs> ooh, when I get out of these chains, I'm going to beat you so hard, your children will be born bruised. I'm going to hit you so hard, your children will be born bruised. You sneered behind your blindfold. You can't see the face I'm making, but I'm making it. After Zachary left, it was just you and Chester, left alone in the bunker. Yes, what, what's that sharp thing do? Let's see, cut off your blindfold? That seems like a bad idea. You shuffled down to be hovering around where the sharp metal lodged out of the wall. Oh! You try to steady yourself on your shoulder, putting all your body weight down onto it as you lower your head towards the metal. As you're leaning, however, your body starts to shake. You lean your head down further until you suddenly feel the metal against your eyelid! It catches you off guard. Ooh! Ooh, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Before you can pull back, you slip on your bed sheets and impale your eye socket into the metal. I knew that's why I didn't want to do that. Ah. Blood poured from your eye socket, seeping onto your mouth and nose, turning your screams into a gurgle. Chester's panicked yells were faint and fading. It sounded like he was calling for you, or maybe Zachary. You couldn't tell. You feel initial sharp, agonizing pain until you feel nothing at all. But there are more secrets to discover. <gasps> All right, all right, all right. What if we try to cut our hands free? Will that work? Yeah, they're metal shackles. You attempt to cut your bindings. You fidget for a while, finding it hard to cut through the metal shackles. While trying to maneuver your hands, you suddenly feel a sharp pain across your palm. Oh! Ooh. 
You can feel the sting along with the warm trickle of blood down your palms. You felt a little agitated that you had cut yourself while trying to get free. Ouch. Uh, what happens if you don't open the cupboard? You push yourself away from the cupboard door, deciding not to cause too much trouble. Oh no, we do want to cause trouble. Zachary is being nice to you now, but you didn't want to test his patience. Oh, we do want to test his patience. In this playthrough, at least. What up? What up, Chester? <coughs> uh, I was working late, so I had to lock myself up one night, and uh, and I just remember being hit over the head, and and then I woke up here. Oh. Let's see, scoot closer to him, comfort him, scold him. Well, we're being mean this playthrough, so why would you do that, fam? Why would you let him do that? You should have been more observant. How didn't you notice someone sneaking up on you? Chester should say, well, the same about you. How, how did you not know somebody sneaking up on you? You're here too, lady. I know. I was stupid. I, I don't know how I didn't hear him. Talking to Chester was certainly enlightening. You were kind of glad you had another person to talk to while you were here. Being alone, you felt like you would go crazy. Go to sleep. Okay, day three is still in development. I don't know if there's anything else we can do. It's okay. We can take it slow. Talk when you're ready. You will be. I suppose I can feed you later, but it'll be cold. Little Moth, you're being so stubborn at the moment. <sighs> Fine. I won't force you. Yet. <laughs> I don't want anything from you. Suit yourself. You can ask me for anything, though. Don't be shy. You know you can still ask me for anything. If you want it. Okay, little moth. Mm. You just nodded. Okay, I think that's all we can do right now. That's a re This is a really interesting uh, concept. It's really neat, too. And the voice acting is really, really good. Ooh, especially Zachary. Oh my goodness. I actually got a little scared. This is Don't Look. Again, this is going to be an adult game with adult situations and adult happenings and goings-ons. And a lot of moths, apparently. So I look forward to playing this again in the future when more is updated or when the game is finished. I like how in-depth it is, uh, looking, looking around your surroundings when you can't look and you can still see the silhouette of the characters, which is probably just as hard to draw. That's pretty impressive. I like that. But we'll have to see what Zachary has in store for us at a later date. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. <laughs>